So today on the bench we have a Redco model RFC50 frequency counter. Um, now I've done a separate video on this. A customer sent this in, didn't even know if it worked. Um, so you wanted me to check, see, does it work? You know, is it going to be worth repairing? Um, and make a power cord up for it because this uses a, a four-pin octal, or not octal. <laughs> forgive me, <laughs> a four-pin cinch Jones-style plug, because this could be run off of AC or DC. Um, and I actually did a separate video on how to, if you don't have a schematic for something, how to figure out how to make up a plug for something like that. That's a whole different video. This one's just on the counter, and I want to, I, I don't think I've ever really brought this up, but when you, if you restore one of these yourself, for starters, this is not a precision instrument. It is a frequency counter, but you can see the 10 and that 100, what they represent is 10 hertz and 100 hertz. So I have it in the the, the best resolution that this thing has, which is 10 hertz uh, resolution. So that's actually 27 is what's actually being put into it. I have the signal generator up here is putting in a 27 megahertz signal. And so that's... 27 and it changes with the ah, not too far there but the decimal point slides over but so that's 27 0, 0, 0, 0. so that's the tens position so you know that that means 100 that means 90 but you can see it's changing and the frequency is going up and if I, as I sit here and talk that'll eventually stay at 10 then it's going to go to 11 and then probably 12 and 13 and it's going to keep counting up and that's what I want to really want to make this video on. So if you have one of these, uh, let's say you've replaced the electrolytic capacitors in it, like I did this one. I made up a power cord. I still need to clean it. It has not been cleaned at all yet. Um, should actually clean up really nice. Most of this stuff's just dirt and grime that's on it. But uh, to calibrate this, for starters, you should have something with a fairly accurate frequency going into it. That's why I'm using the signal generator up there. Uh, you know, that is reference to a, a GPS-disciplined oscillator, so I know that thing is dead on frequency. It's disciplined to the GPS satellites hovering over our heads. But you don't really need something that accurate for this. If you have a radio that you're fairly confident the frequencies, uh, the output frequency on its right, because this is meant to be used not to, as a counter so much through this front uh, port here, which is a, a low low signal level input port. This is mainly meant to be used in line with a coax cable, okay, so to your antenna. So the radio, you'll have a cable that goes from your radio into this and then on the other connector would go to your antenna. And you'll see that when I pop the cover off of this in a minute. Um, but like I said, it's not a precision instrument. It does not have an oven oven controlled, well actually it is almost oven controlled. That's kind of the problem with these. <laughs> but uh, you need to let these things warm up and the temperature stabilize. That's kind of the whole point of this video. Let it warm up. When you calibrate, you know, even test equipment, you're supposed to let that stuff turned on. Most labs will let something turned on for a day for it to stabilize in temperature. Now, like I say, it's only got 10 and 100 hertz resolution. This isn't high precision. But you want to let something like this turned on for about an hour. The reason is it's old. It's got 7,000 series logic ICs in it, and they get hot. So let's take a look-see inside here. And the cover's yeah, just starting to get warm. But this has lots of heat generators in it. But like I say, this thing is old school. I just want to see how usually the driver ICs for the display. Yeah, those are pretty warm. Yeah, they're, those are getting pretty toasty. They're probably around 130, 140 degrees. Yeah, they're around 130, 136. Yeah, so they, they, and they'll get hotter than that. They'll probably get up above 140 degrees. But that's the whole reason you need to let one of these things turned on for a long time. <laughs> You need to let the entire unit warm up. This does not have any type of control for this crystal. There's nothing here to stabilize the temperature of this crystal. And as the temperature changes, the frequency is going to change. So the accuracy of your counter is going to change. So if you just turn it on, put a signal into this thing, and adjust it, 
a half hour later, it's going to be off, possibly by hundreds of hertz. Um, so you really need to let one of these warm up. And what will happen is the stuff that's getting really hot in here, eventually the nice thing about this is it has an aluminum chassis. Aluminum is really good at dissipating heat and transferring heat very easily. That's why they use it for heat sinks. But since the entire bottom plate, actually the entire the cover, the front, the back, everything is aluminum. But that heat can easily get transferred evenly around the unit. So eventually the air temperature inside of this thing will stabilize, you know, fairly good. Uh, but that's why you want to let it turn on for a while. So if you have one of these, like I say, you can just hook up a radio. This is not, you're not going to be calibrating radios with this thing by any stretch of the imagination. This is definitely not accurate enough for that. But it's great for if you've got a radio that you've done a toggle switch mod to. <laughs> you don't, you, you just need to see what frequency your radio is actually transmitting on. Something like this is perfect. You just hook up in line and you can see it's just a jumper wire right here that goes from one jack to the other. And then there's a small ceramic coupling capacitor that takes a small sample off. And it's actually, if you follow this coax cable here, it goes down. They actually join together there. So they both go down to the board. But uh, yeah, so it's just a, you know, a pass through here with a small sample port. So it, they work well for what they're designed for. But like I say, it's not a lab instrument. So don't expect lab quality readings off of something like this. But to try and get it as accurate as possible when you use something like this, don't expect it to be accurate cold. You should turn it on, and after you know 45 minutes or an hour, that's probably when it's going to be start starting to get close to the point where it's going to reach uh, its best stability because the entire unit will have had time to warm up. And actually, just since I've taken the cover off, you can see the frequencies dropping. You know, four, three, four, three sets. You know, what do I have it in? Tens, yeah, ten, the tens, tens position. But yeah, the frequencies you know, hovering around there, but that's because since I took the cover off, fresh, cool air is getting in here, and it's cooling that crystal down. So, like I say, that's basically the point of this video. If you've got one of these counters, these in-the-line counters, you want to calibrate it, turn it on, leave it on for a while. Let, let the thing warm up. When you put your hand on top of it, you go, ah, oh, man, nice and warm. It's, that's about the time you should do it. Now, when you go to calibrate it, take the cover off and really quickly do your adjustment. Don't take the cover off, set it off to the side, and then decide, okay, now I've got to go find an adjuster. Have your tools ready, have the radio or whatever you're using to inject your signal into this thing ready. So the instant you take this cover off, you can go to do the adjustment, because you can see the frequency drops once it starts to cool down. The instant that cover comes off, that can't crystal can is going to start to cool down, and the frequency is going to change. So you need to do it with some expediency, before the crystal cools down. But uh, there's just a few tips on calibrating one of these things yourself. And another thing, be careful when you work on something like this. If, like this one right now, this is running off of the AC power supply. So there are 100, there's 120 volts on this switch up here at the front, on this front section of this wafer switch, and the two terminals down here in the back uh, of the transformer have 120 volts on them right now. So unless you're running this thing off of a DC power cord, there are lethal voltages inside of stuff like this. It's not like some, like when you're working on a radio a lot of times, the components are on the top side, but all the high voltage, the 120 volts and the connections for the transformers and switches are on the bottom side. This isn't like that. The live honey, it's, there is no bottom to this thing. It's just a solid plate of aluminum. So just be aware where you're sticking your fingers. We don't want people, you know, we don't want you to get shocked or worse yet, dead, because you accidentally touched one of the, the switch contacts up here or something in the back or over, you know, over at the power, the power plug back there in the corner. So just be aware of that high voltage safety. Anytime the cover's off, there's possibility of death inside something like this.